Yes, I did want to mention some news as well as we kind of uh, end here, which is Viacom in the same area uh, getting a deal done. I mentioned it yesterday, the sale of Simon & Schuster uh, just announced. Uh, Bertelsmann is the buyer, uh, and the price tag there is quite, well, almost astonishing. $2.175 in cash is what we're talking about. And why do I say that? Well, that's a multiple of about 15 times um, EBITDA, and that is quite a lot, uh, perhaps more than we'd been expecting, uh, certainly more than perhaps Viacom had when it began this process. There were people talking about the asset being worth perhaps a billion, a billion two. You're talking about, as I understand, about 155 million or so uh, in uh, EBITDA. So you can put that multiple on that. Now, there'd been some question and will continue to be about an antitrust, uh, the antitrust risk of this. Bertelsmann owns both Random House and Penguin. Uh, they would have market share of the, on, the, on the order of some 35 percent. Now, some will say, listen, market share is not an indication of market power. But I would note as well, I am told at least that this does include the language is not there in the release. In the release, they simply say a Bertelsmann has agreed to take all steps necessary to obtain regulatory approvals. I am told, though, that is being viewed as what we call a hell or high water provision, namely that they'll do whatever it takes to get that done, because you do want antitrust security, so to speak, if you are Viacom. It's great to sign up a deal at that number, but if you can't close the deal, it doesn't really matter much. There had been competition here. Uh, News Corp's HarperCollins unit had been a significant bidder as well, I'm told, uh, but obviously falling short for a price, by the way, that is just far in excess of what people had anticipated when this asset was put on the market. Fortunately for Viacom, well, however you want to view it, they also put their headquarters in Midtown up. It's called BlackRock, where CBS uh, has been housed, uh, and their studio on the far west side. That market, Carl, for office buildings and the like in New York, probably not what it was a year ago. But they're taking in some serious <laughs> yeah. money uh, right now over at Viacom. And the stock no. prices rebounded sharply from the incredible lows it saw only a few months ago. Yeah, David, and it's hard not to notice this one line. Proceeds will be used to invest in strategic growth priorities, including streaming, yep. and to fund the dividend, pay down debt. It's kind of nice to have $2 billion to put to work on fresh content. No doubt. Uh, and, right, that's why it fits right in with what Mike was talking about with Disney, because this is a very important part of the strategy at Viacom as well. There are some questions about what Paramount Plus will look like, uh, exactly how much of it and how they're going to choose to make content for other providers and also have their own direct to consumer but everybody's got to have one discovery i was talking to malone last week about it they're probably going to have one in the not too distant future as well everybody's got to have direct to consumer the question becomes just how many of these services will people want to subscribe to do you need to be on all these platforms roku apple tv amazon fire all of them to even be able to get to that consumer how important is that uh and how do you price them by the way, coming back to, to direct to consumer at Disney, Mike, that was the key thing. That's six ninety nine. Yeah, exactly. That price, moment yeah. when they said that price, that really shook everybody up. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.